Now I'm going to show you how to make the foot. This is what mine looks like. It's a little bit different from my other crochet dogs that I've made. It's definitely one of the larger ones that I've made. The first thing you're going to do is start with your black yarn. You're going to drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place. With your pinky and thumb, we're going to make the magic circle again. Just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet, go ahead and pull on one of the loops on the opposite side. This one's closing, so I'm going to go ahead and just close it up. If not, let go and pull on the other one. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed, we'll close it more later. Take the loose yarn in and close on that, pull on that. Then just turn your work. We're going to work into the first stitch of the circle. So take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch, and you're going to place two single crochet into that same stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches. Now you can go ahead and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end if you need to to close the center of the magic circle. Then we're going to change colors, yarn colors. You just take your crochet hook. Actually we're not going to change colors yet. You're going to get your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and we're going to make three increase rounds first. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the first stitch, make one single crochet and then in the second stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet in one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. For the next increase round make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch Repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then just make your last increase round before changing colors. One single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. After that last increase round of one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch, go ahead and remove your yarn marker. Then take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Then you're going to grab your new yarn color, the white colored yarn. Bring it through both loops. Then go ahead and chain one. And then tie a knot. And then just cut the previous colored yarn. Then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. Then when you make it back to the beginning, go ahead and take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. We're going to make one more increase round. For this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the next four stitches. 
and then two single crochet into the same stitch for the fifth stitch. Go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker. Then when you reach the yarn marker go ahead and remove it and then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then go through the loop to finish off. Leave a long enough loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then you're just going to set this aside. For now, now again, you're going to make your magic circle. You're going to make your slip knot with the black yarn then six single crochet into the magic circle just like we did before. Then you're just going to go ahead and close up the magic circle. Turn your work and place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. Then just turn your work over and then pull on that loose yarn end on the back to close the center of the magic circle. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. We're going to join the white colored yarn. Chain one tie a knot, go ahead and cut the black colored yarn, then tie your knot, then you're going to make one increase round with your white colored yarn. So you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. One single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet into the second stitch, all the way around back to where we started. Then you're just going to take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and you need three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So go ahead and finish three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this onto the paw. You need four of these. Now after you have all of your four pieces, then you're going to take and sew them to the other portion of the paw. Just take your tapestry needle and if you didn't leave a long end for sewing you can just get the white colored yarn and put it onto your tapestry needle. Then you're just going to sew them. I'm just going to tie a knot here to my loose yarn end. Then just take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew just a few stitches together. And then you're going to get the next piece 
and put that piece next to the first one and then you're just going to sew the pieces next to each other and then I go up the middle portion between the two sides as well and I go about four stitches up Actually, I'm going to go one more stitch. Then I'm going to go back down towards, whoops, jab myself, towards where you started. Then I'm just going to tie a knot to the loose yarn end. Then you just go a couple of stitches over. And then you're ready to add the next one. And you just keep sewing just like that until you have all four of them sewn onto the bottom of the paw. This is what mine looks like after sewing all four pieces in place on the paw. Now you're ready to start sewing around the paw. So I like to start in the back of the paw. So I just take my crochet hook, go right in the stitch at the back of the paw. Then take your white colored yarn, bring up a loop, then chain one and tie a knot. Then you're going to crochet two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. Go ahead and get your yarn marker to help you keep track of the rounds. You're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch over and one single crochet into every stitch. Every time that you reach a curve, and I'm going to show you at my first curve. So here is my first curve, which I'm going to call the toe in the paw. So I have two stitches, one on the bottom portion of the paw and then the toe of the paw. So I'm going to make a decrease stitch in that curve. So I take my crochet hook, go into that first stitch, bring up a loop, go into the first stitch on the toe, bring up a loop, then make your decrease stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through all three for a decrease stitch, and then just continue on with one single crochet in every stitch. And you need two rounds and every time you come into a curve, you're going to make one decrease stitch. So I'm going to show you at this next one. So here I have another curve or junction between the toes. So I'm going to make a decrease stitch at that junction. And then just continue on one single crochet in every stitch. Go ahead and complete two rounds and then come back. After you finish two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch until you get to 
the toes of the paw. I'm just going to work it with you. So one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the first toe. So now I have one single crochet in the last stitch right before the toe and now you're going to make decrease stitches all the way across to the opposite side. So I'm just going to work the, these with you. You go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, next stitch over, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for one decrease. your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and you may not have the exact same number as me. As long as you're close, that's fine. It's the ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelve, thirteen. 14 and I'm going to make one more so for mine I had 15 decreases across the front and this is how mine looks and like I said you may not have the exact same number but pretty close because the way we sewed them on you may have a different number of stitches open and that's fine then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for one round. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch. Now you just take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch to the first toe and then we're going to make more decrease stitches across the front of the paw. I'll just work it with you so you can see what I'm doing. So now I'm getting close to the first toe. I'm going to start making my decrease stitches. So this is my first one. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. seventh and eighth. Then I'm just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. So now this is where the stitch count will matter. You want to make sure that all of your paws or the foot portion for the dog have the same number of stitches as you're working around. So this one that I first started that I made had 30. So I want to make sure that the stitch count will be 30 around for my next paw. So in order to do this I need six more stitches. So I just took some yarn markers and evenly spaced them around. So I'm going to start with two single crochet and then I'm going to make two single crochet in each of the yarn marker spaces and that will increase my stitch count for so the I'm just going to show you I'm going to move my yarn marker up and for this first round I'm going to be making it an increase round so I'm going to place two 
single crochet into the same stitch into my first stitch and then one single crochet in every stitch to my first yarn marker so I'm at my first yarn marker I'm going to take out the yarn marker and then I'm going to place two single crochet into the same stitch and that's how you're going to work this round if you already have the correct number of stitches that you want for the size of your paw then you would just work one single crochet in every stitch around. Now I have a total of 30 stitches in the round which is what I wanted and this is how my foot looks so far. For my other foot or paw that I made this is what it looks like with the white portion before I changed colors to the honey colored yarn so you can decide how many rounds that you want you can change it up for mine I'm going to make eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch with the white colored yarn and when I come back I'll show you how to change colors to the honey colored yarn you can stuff the paw at any time if you want extra stuffing in your the toes of the paw then you'll want to stuff them now as you're crocheting. So just finished eight rounds then I'm ready to change colors so just take my crochet hook go into the next stitch over and then you can make a slip stitch just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook then finish off this will help keep the color change a little bit more even then you just take your crochet hook go into the same stitch where you just finished off and then you're going to grab the honey colored yarn then just bring up a loop chain one and then go ahead and tie then a knot. you just need one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed 32 additional rounds with your new color after you finish the 32 rounds then you're going to close it make sure that you stuffed it well take your yarn marker place it right where you left off then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches then make your decrease stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into three stitches and then make your decrease stitch so go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker for the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and as you're making your decrease stitches you'll see that the number of stitches in the round are decreasing and you're slowly closing the top of the leg. Then for the next decrease round you'll make one single crochet into one stitch and then make your decrease stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. Now you can make decrease stitches until you can't make these decrease stitches anymore and then we're going to make slip stitches to close up the leg. So I'm going to make one more decrease stitch and then I'll show you how to slip stitch. 
So to slip stitch it closed, you just skip a stitch and then work into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for slip stitch. And you're just going to keep slip stitching until the top of the leg is closed. And then we can go ahead and finish off. And make one more. Then I want to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can take your tapestry needle and place it onto the long end that you left for sewing. Go right where you tied your knot or finished off and then just come out anywhere on the leg. Then you just bury your loose yarn end. Then you can go ahead and cut it. Then you need, just need a total of four of these. They're all made the exact same way. So now I want to show you how to sew the legs onto the body. You're going to need the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. And you're also going to need two of your legs. The first thing you're going to do, I'm going to show you the easiest way, since we have a large dog, the easiest way that I found to make it. Just take your tapestry needle and you're going to go make sure that the front of the foot is facing forward and then you want to go midway up and then you're going to go about one, two, three, four, about five rows down, right midline with the side of the foot. Then you're going to go through to the exact same level on the opposite side and then come out with your tapestry needle and make sure that you leave a long loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. Then you're going to line up the leg you want to see how you want the leg to line up on the body. And then once you have the leg lined up where you want it, make sure that your paw is facing forward. When you're happy with where you want to position your leg, then you're going to look and see where the yarn comes out of the leg. And then just take your tapestry needle and you're going to go in that spot to the other side. So you can see where mine is placed. I'm about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows in. And approximately from the head, say right here from this row from the head, I'm about one, two, three, four, five, rows down. Then I'm going to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to go through to the opposite side. Make sure you come out the exact same area approximately. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I should come out Make sure you don't poke yourself also, but you can see that I'm coming out on the opposite side with my tapestry needle, approximately the same area that I went in on the opposite side. Then you just want to pull the yarn, and you don't want too loose of a yarn between the leg and the body, but you do want it fairly close. So mine's approximately, I'm going to make it approximately an inch to two inches from the body. Then you're just going to take the opposite leg and you're going to go in through the side of the opposite leg. Now make sure that your paw is facing forward. You don't want to put your foot in on backwards. And then midway again, you're going to go through 
and I'm about the same number of rows down that I was on the other leg. And then you're going to go through to the opposite side. Make sure that you're midway on the opposite side at the same level. Then you're going to bring the yarn through. And then the exact same thing. Now you're going to go right back through. And I usually go about a stitch over. And then I'm going to go right back through about a stitch over from where I went in. And then you could pull the yarn snugly, not too snug, we want it fairly loose. But you also want, again, the leg to be close to the body. And then you're going to go about a stitch over on the body. And then go back through and then come out. Be careful you don't poke yourself. And then you're going to come out about a stitch over from the entry point on the opposite side. And then just bring that yarn through. Then you just take and go about a stitch over on the other leg. And then for my dog, I like to go through twice the exact same way. And be careful you don't tangle your yarn as you go back in and repeat the same process. I do that just to strengthen the legs to the body. So you can see how I'm going about a stitch down from where my other entry and exit points are. And then I'm going to go right through the body, about a stitch apart from the other entry and exit areas on the body of the dog. Now I've already gone through and I'm coming back to where I started. Now you're ready to pull on both yarn ends and then just pull the yarn ends until the legs are snug against the After body. After you pull the legs snugly against the body, be careful you don't pull too tight because the yarn will snap on you. So as soon as you put pull the yarn so that the legs go against the body, go ahead and tie a knot. And then you're going to put the back legs on the exact same way. Then you can just cut your yarn, leave long enough loose yarn ends to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle and then you take the loose yarn end and you go right in where you tied your knot and then just come out anywhere on the leg. and then just cut your loose yarn end. So go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends and then attach your back legs. This is what my front legs look like and they move up and down after I attached them to the body. Now when you're attaching the back legs you want to make sure that when you stand your dog up that the, le the legs will be level with each other. And this is where I'm going in with my tapestry needle. So I'm about from the edge where we started closing. I'm about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in again. And then I'm level with my other leg. So now both of her legs are on. And we're ready to make her tail. 
To make the boxer dog tail, you're going to start with your white yarn. We're going to start with the magic circle, just like we did before. You're going to make your slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your finger and your thumb and hold the base of the six single crochet. You have those two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. And then just pull on that loose yarn end. Then turn your work. We're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around just like we did before. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches and then come back. Then if you need to close the center of your magic circle go ahead and turn it over and pull on that loose yarn end. Go ahead and grab your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. And you're going to make three rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. After three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker. Then you're going to take your crochet hook. Make sure that you have it turned so that the um, wrong side is on the inside which is where the loose yarn end is. You can tuck that right into the inside. Then you're just going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. Go ahead and grab your main color yarn for your dog and then just bring up a loop. Bring it through both loops on the hook and bring up a loop. Then chain one. Then you can go ahead and cut the previous colored yarn, which is the white yarn. Tie a knot. You can tuck the loose yarn ends into the center as you're crocheting right into the center cup. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch for the length that you want for your dog's tail. So you can have fun with the colors and use whatever, whatever colors that you want and then make your tail as long or as short as you want. When you come back I'll show you how long I made my I tail. I made mine 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over for a slip stitch. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto your dog. So for the tail, I didn't stuff mine. I just left it the way it was and then just I placed the tail, center it where you would like the tail on the back of the dog and then once you center it just take your tapestry needle and then go through the base of the tail. So you go through the body and then you're going to sew all around the base or the bottom of the tail. So just take your tapestry needle and then you just go right back in through the base of the tail and then out sewing all the way around making sure that you have the tail centered and that it doesn't 
move or become crooked and then you just sew it all the way around until the tail is secure. This is what your dog will look like when you're done. And now you're ready to decorate your dog. This is what Charlie looks like with his cowboy hat on. And he has his bandana. And his collar is on underneath. There is a separate YouTube video tutorial for the dog bone. This actually has a zipper on it, so I show you how to place the zipper. And then I have a bow that I'm going to be using on Athena. And her, this bow I got from Dollar Tree, but they don't have the clasp anymore, so I'm going to have to sew this on, this barrette on. It actually just has a clip. So I'm going to sew it in place because the color is still beautiful and matches her eyes. Some of the collars that I used for my dogs. Here's a pet mate reflective nylon medium sized. Here's another medium sized dog collar. Also this is a large pet outfit that also fits these dogs. If you like this cowboy hat there's a separate video tutorial for the cowboy hat and then I just attached this sewed it to the front of the cowboy hat. The cowboy hat can be found on my YouTube channel, the Amigurumi Bulldog Accessories, Hats, and Collar. Now for Charlie's cowboy hat, I want to have loops for it to hook onto his ears. You could sew the hat on if you wanted to, but for mine, I'm just going to make some loop chains that will go around his ears and hold the hat on. That way it's The removable. first thing you're going to want to do is just line up the hat on your dog and then with yarn markers mark where the ears where the chain loops are going to go around the dog's ears. So here is the one side what it looks like. I've already placed this is a chain of 22 so now I'm going to show you how I did it with the other side, the opposite side. So you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then take your crochet hook and place it under the copper wire and then take the same colored yarn as your cowboy hat and then you want to hook and bring up a loop then you want to chain one and then just tie a knot Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then you're going to make a chain of 22. One, two, three, four, five. After you finish a chain of 22, then you're going to take the opposite side where you have the yarn marker on the same side actually for the ear loop. Take out that yarn marker and then take your crochet hook, go under the copper wire and then you're going to make a slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over and then just bring the yarn under the copper wire and through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. Go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can take and just bury your loose yarn ends and then you have, you make the ear loop on the opposite side the exact same way and then you have a way to hold the cowboy hat onto your dog. For his bandana, Charlie's bandana, I just folded it into a triangle then you can just fold the, fold the edge down twice 
or three times. I just fold it twice and then it's ready to be tied on to your Before dog. you put your bandana on, you, you'll want to put your dog collar on. For Charlie, I have a store-bought collar that I have. It has reflective paws on it and has his name, Charlie. And then also I have a charm on here for him, a lucky charm. The lucky charm I got from a set. This is an earring set. So the earring piece, it, this will actually just unclip and then you can use these for crochet earrings if you wanted to. So it's an inexpensive charm. It's really cute. To make your dog collar, you're going to take whatever color you want for your dog collar and then just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. For my dog collar I used my 5 millimeter crochet hook. Then I just made a chain of 50. I'm going to make four of them with you. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and finish your chain of 50 and then come back. After you finish your chain of 50, then you can go ahead and hold that last stitch you made with your middle finger and thumb, then make a chain of three. One, two, three, then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch you're holding. Go ahead and yarn over, go into that fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Get a little bit more yarn. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So go ahead and yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your double crochet. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. Go ahead and finish making one double crochet into every stitch back across and then come back. After you finish your last double crochet in the last stitch, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the charms on and bury your loose yarn end. And also to sew the two ends together. Now here is the name tag that I got for Athena and then she also has her clover on hers. And then you're just going to take your dog collar, make sure that you have the right side facing out, and then put it around the dog. Make sure it's not twisted. Then you can take your tapestry needle. Place the long end that you left for sewing. Make sure it's not, it isn't twisted and then just go through the top part of the collar. And then you just want to sew the collar together all the way down to the bottom. Then you can take and tie a knot with the loose yarn end at the bottom. Then you can go ahead and get your tag and then just tie a knot. Then you can take and just bury your loose yarn ends. I like to go a couple of times. just making sure that it's buried. Then you can take and cut the loose yarn end.
Go ahead and bury your other loose yarn in. Then you can take and move the dog collar to the front. This is what mine looks like. And I even bunched mine up just a little bit, sewed the ends together just a little bit. And then here's the clover, four leaf clover. So this is the bow that I'm going to be using. It matches her eyes. However, they didn't use the metal clips. They use these cheap um, snap clips that don't really stay on very well. So I'm going to sew it down in place. It'll still work. I got it from Dollar Tree for a dollar, so it's still not too bad, but I liked it better when they had the metal clips. So then I'm able to fit the clip through the crochet on the dog. You have to maneuver it through. Then once you get the clip through, then you're able to sew it down with your sewing needle and thread. Since it's hard to get through the snap, I just went through the back portion of the bow and then just sewed back there and then buried the loose yarn ends. I just took one of my smaller tapestry needles with a larger eye and then took all of the sewing thread and then just brought it through the back side of the ribbon and buried it that way. And then I just trimmed it. And this is what she looks like with her bow in place.